Good morning. Um, this is our episode of Reptiles and Amphibians, um, our webinar series with our friends at the Division of Parks and Watercraft. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, I'm Alyssa Yapel. If you missed our first episode, which was on venomous snakes, you can go to our YouTube channel, Ohio DNR, and watch it back there. All of our webinars are recorded, so if you miss anything today, you can go back and watch this one as well. Um, so I just want to let you know what we have coming down the pike before we get started. Um, as you know, today we are talking about turtles. Who doesn't love turtles? And next week we will be talking about Ohio snakes. So we're going to talk about venomous snakes, but we're going to talk about some other Ohio snakes that you can find. Um, the following week on the 23rd, we will be talking about frogs, toads, and amphibians. And to wrap up our webinar series on the 5th, we're going to be going over vernal pools and all the cool things that you can find in vernal pools and how you can create one in your own backyard if you'd like to. So I am going to quickly introduce who uh, we have here on the screen. Um, so Jenna Winters is going to be helping me with questions today. So if any of you have questions, I see a few of you have already wrote in and we'll get to those shortly. Um, feel free to utilize the Q&A box and um, let us know any questions you have for our and then we're going to kick it off today with Lauren, who is from Mommy Bay State Park in Northwest Ohio, and she's going to talk about all sorts of cool things, um, characteristics, turtles' habitats, native and non-native turtles, um, some challenges they face, such as predators, and even touch on um, pet trade. So once we hear from Lauren, then we're going to hear from Aaron at Caesar Creek State Park in Southwest Ohio. And Aaron is going to show us some of these turtles that we talk about. And so is Kara. Kara is in Northwest Ohio with us. Um, there, there's Kara. And she's going to show us some turtles as well. So we'll get started with Lauren. Um, I'm going to pass it on to you. Hello, thank you so much. Again, my name is Lauren Stewart. I'm the naturalist here at Mommy Bay State Park. And what I'm gonna be having is showing you a little bit about turtles, giving you some background information. So turtles are really neat. They're actually a type of reptile. So they are different than mammals and birds as they are cold-blooded. So a cold-blooded animal is also known as an ectotherm. So, but what differs turtle, what makes turtles a little bit more unique, a little bit more different than a lot of other reptiles is they have something very special that other reptiles don't have. They have this really cool feature. They have the shell and the shell is super neat because it's basically, they, they have a, a shield at all times. It does come with some drawbacks, but it's really important in their survival and it makes them a lot different than other reptiles that we can find. So our turtles. So some cool facts about turtles. Turtles are very long lived. Um, they can live decades upon decades in the wild. They can live about to 100 years in captivity. The largest turtle weighs almost a ton, so 2,000 pounds. The largest turtle that we can find in Ohio is actually the turtle that belongs to the shell, the common snapping turtle, and they can get 55 pounds. So that's, that's definitely the size of a, a child. So they can get very, very large. Um, Turtles are unique in the sense that they eat a varied diet. Some turtles tend to prefer more vegetation. Some turtles pretend to prefer to um, eat things like meat, and even they'll eat th things like carrion, which is dead things. Um, turtles are some of the oldest in the reptile lineage. So they are aged about to, to uh, sorry, 220 million years old. So they are a very, very, very old group of animals. And they, a lot of times, that you'll see turtles is they regulate their body temperature by sunning. So when you're going out and you see turtles like doing what I like to call turtle ballet, they usually have their le their legs sticking out and they have weird poses. They'll be out in the log, they're sunning, they're trying to get that sun, they're trying to regulate their body heat. And the great thing is if it gets too hot, all they have to do is jump off into the water and they can cool down. But one of my favorite facts is they're normally solitary creatures, but a group of turtles is called a bale or a turn of turtles. I personally would have thought they'd be called a slow of turtles just because of their uh, lack of speed, but a bale or a turn is what you call a group of turtles. So our turtle shell, that's the unique feature that they do have, and I actually have a skeleton to show you. So um, picture on the left can show you kind of how they uh, 
the shell was formed over time. But what I have here with me is our modern turtle. So we can actually see that their shell is actually part of their body. It grows with them. They started out, they hatched with the egg with it. It grows with them all their life. They cannot come completely out of their shell. That is a myth. Um, Lauren, can you hold it a, a little closer to the camera? There was a, okay. Yeah, sorry, there's a little bit of a glare, but you can see it a little better up close. Um, so here's what looking on the inside. You can actually see where the ribs and the spine are all fused with their shell. Their shell can be made up of 50 to 60 bones, and it could be cartilage or bone. And what's unique about the turtle shell is they're covered in basically a keratin layer. So like our fingernails are made out of keratin. Um, they're called scoops. So they kind of usually the scoops is where you can find the coloration. So like the snapping turtle is covered with scoots. The, the scoots themselves on um, the snapping turtle aren't brightly colored, but other turtles like the painted turtle or even our box turtle have a lot more ornate coloration to it. But I do have a shell without the scoops on it. So this is an old box turtle shell. And you can see the, the bone layer underneath and then where the scoots still remained are here. But this is what it looks like underneath the scoots, underneath that keratin layer, and you can see the actual bone that's formed. And what's nice about this one, you can see this, the spine and the ribs, how they're all part of the shell. The turtle cannot come out of the shell, it is part of their body. So you might have heard a few different names for turtles. Um, they actually, you can hear, usually it's three different names. It's They are all basically one type of animal. They're all related, but we usually we differentiate between them by where they live. So turtle used to commonly refer to is just sea turtle. That's what they used to classify as a turtle was the sea turtle. So we're not gonna find really any of these here in Ohio, but now the word turtle kind of encompasses all of the aquatic turtles. So a lot of the turtles, the pond turtles that you'll see, um, are usually, you'll hear them referred to as turtles. Tortoise, turtle, tortoises are basically just land turtles. They're usually found in drier areas. They tend to be more strictly herbivore and don't really tend to eat meat. But the one that we know that we see the most of today is actually the terrapin, the pond turtle. And usually we refer to them as just turtles. So the red-eared slider, the midland painted turtle. So if we look on this PowerPoint, the one on the bottom right, that is what we, is a terrapin, but we commonly refer to that as a turtle. So turtle anatomy. So here, so turtles are really unique. So they, remember they have this shell that grows with them all of their life, but their shell, it can act as a shield. Some turtles can come, they can actually pull their heads completely all the way inside their shell. And that's a really good defense mechanism because what's the one place that you don't want to get injured? You don't want to get your head injured because that's where all your body, the brain tells you how to do all the functioning of your body. If you, if you have an injured head, that really can be an issue. So if you look on that far left hand uh, picture, you can see the skeleton, it's a side shot of this turtle that has pulled its head all the way into the shell. And you can see it has a very long neck and that allows it to be able to move its head out and head in and keep it protected. So in the middle, you can see a better example of the uh, turtle anatomy, that skeleton that I had with a little bit less of a glare. You can see that there's the, so the bottom part of the turtle shell is called the, the plastron. So I have an example of a plastron here. This is kind of basically like, it almost looks like a skateboard. It's usually pretty flat, especially in our pond turtles. They tend to have a more compressed looking shell because they have to be a little more hydrodynamic. So this plastron here protects the belly, essentially. Now, some turtles have larger plastrons than others. So this larger bottom piece than others. Um, in particular, our snapping turtle has a very, very small plastron and we'll get more into that species in a little bit. But the plastron can really uh, determine how agile they are. So it's a lot harder to move faster, especially on land. If you have basically a big, you're kind of holding almost like wearing a backpack in front of you, but a backpack that's made out of bone. So it can be heavy and it can be hard to maneuver. And then the top part of their shell. So here's our box turtle shell to kind of give you an example of the more land turtle style. They have a little more domed look. This top part is called the carapace. So this is what you often see when you see a turtle, you're more likely going to be able to see their carapace, the top part of their shell. This helps them, especially from aerial predators, so from birds, and even animals such as raccoons, coyotes, dogs. A lot of animals try to eat turtles, but they have um, one up on them with this nice, basically, shield made of bone. So turtles don't have teeth. They have, it's almost like a bird beak. So we call their, their mouth is often referred to as a beak, it's tooth-like. 
And here is a snapping turtle mill. Um, this will give you a little better idea of how it gets the name beak because it is basically one sharp tooth that is continuous on both sides. Um, turtles don't chew their food like we do. They'll sometimes take out chunks or they'll try to eat their food whole. And turtles can eat, as I said, a variety of things. They can eat vegetation, they can eat uh, fruits, they can eat small animals, fish, frogs, tadpoles, insects, uh, dead things such as carrion. Our snapping turtle has a very, very diet. Um, it will eat everything from fish to even small mammals. So the snapping turtle will eat a variety of things and they are not picky. They will definitely eat dead things as well. And that is true of most turtles. They usually aren't very picky when it comes to what they're eating. Turtle reproduction. So turtles, um, a reptile, uh, like reptiles, will lay eggs. So they are a type of reptile, they'll lay eggs. But what's different about turtle eggs than when you think of bird eggs? Bird eggs are usually more oblong shaped. They are, they have that hard shell that can crack. Turtles and most reptiles lay more of a soft, leathery type of eggs. They're squishy. They kind of feel almost like a deflated football. But what's neat about turtles is the temperature of where they lay their eggs determines whether they're male or female. So if it's warmer, they might be male. If it's colder, it might be female. So it, it's really neat depending, you can kind of guess if you'll have a whole a clutch of a whole bunch of males or a whole bunch of females depending on the temperature of how deep they buried it and how deep the nest is and how warm or cold the nest is. Um, like most reptiles, turtles do not do parental care. Uh, they tend to lay a lot of eggs and they tend to have a lot of young. Um, when the young are very, when they first hatch and even when they're eggs, they're very, very vulnerable. So they tend to reproduce a lot to try to ensure that as many that can survive, but they, the percentages usually aren't very high of young that do survive because there is no parental, parental care. There's nobody guarding the nest. They just lay them and then move on. Um, they can lay 10 to 100 eggs depending on the species. So they could, there can be a lot of turtles coming out. And if you see on this right-hand side, it's actually showing a picture of a snapping turtle nest that the babies just hatched out of. Um, they're about the size of a quarter. So when you're thinking of things that might eat them, even though they have that hard shell, when you're about the side of the quarter, you are still on the menu for a lot of different animals. So what do we have in Ohio? We have, we're very lucky in Ohio, even though we're fairly far north, we have 11 native, native species of turtle. And they range from being fairly small, like our musk turtle, all the way to the, one of the largest species, the common snapping turtle, 55 pounds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have Erin show us some of the live turtles. We're gonna start off with our non-native red-eared slider. All right, okay, hi, my, I'm Erin Shaw. I'm here at Caesar Creek State Park and I do have a red-eared slider here to show you. They get pretty big. So this guy out of all the turtles I have is the most likely to bite me. So I don't know if you can see that very well. They have the red band close to their ears. And something cool about these guys uh, is that the, the Teenage Ninja Turtles, the cartoon I watched as a kid, uh, were designed after the red-eared sliders. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I think Lauren's gonna talk later about having pets. It's illegal to have a pet and release it here in Ohio. So a lot of the red-eared sliders uh, here were released pets. So please do not do that. She's going to talk more about that later. They actually are pretty difficult pets, to be honest. They get large and they bite and, you know, you have to clean their tank. They're pretty high maintenance. Uh, you have to have different kinds of lights. Um, anyways, I'm going to show you next the map turtle. This one is much smaller, so I'll be able to get him out. Uh, the map turtle, and again, I'll, I'm dripping on my laptop here. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. It's called that because on the shell, there's little lines that looks like a topographical map. Also, his skin, if you can see that, I'm not sure. There's uh, little lines that reminds me of a topo map. So they stay pretty small. The male stays about five inches or so, and the female gets about 10 inches. And uh, they're fairly common here in Ohio. And then the last species I have to show you up close 
is the soft, this is a spiny soft shell turtle. This one's likely to bite me too. So they have very soft bellies and they have very long necks. Their shell back here is uh, super soft. It's like a rubbery pancake. So their shell is soft and uh, their demeanor is not. So you might see one if you're floating down the river or you know around areas around the water here in Ohio. So those are three really neat species. I think Kara has some more to show us. So thank you, Kara. Fox turtle to show you. So as Lauren was saying, like the carapace or the um, the scoops, some of the turtles have more coloration than others. This is one of those turtles that has a beautiful shell. And actually they use it as camouflage because this is a woodland turtle. So you won't really find this in water. They can be in shallow water, but you will not find them swimming around. They actually will drown. But um, so you'll find these in leaf litter in the wooded areas, not necessarily right here. And like at the park I'm at right now, it's very swampy. So this is not the best area for them, but in other wooded areas. So this is the box turtle right here, as I said. So they're known as box turtle because of their shell. She was talking about the plastron on the other turtles. This one actually has a hinge. So when they feel scared, they'll actually completely shut in their shell. This one won't do it. She is not scared at all. She's trying to actually get away from me right now. But normally they'll close completely up and then nothing can get to them. And there's the beak as well. You can see her beak. So they have a a varied diet as well. They'll eat anything from berries to worms to minnows, anything like that. Um, so here's another one right here. These turtles actually can live up to 70 years old in the wild or longer. They seem to do actually better in the wild because they have the nutrients that maybe we can't always give them. But these are one of the turtles, which Lauren will get into later, that people keep as pets. A lot, um, so as Kara was showing, so this is the box turtle. She's a little bit more shy. As you can see, she can completely close up. She's still halfway peeking out because she knows we're not gonna hurt her, but she's just a little more camera, camera shy than the other. But this hinge here allows her to completely close up, hence the name box turtle. They look like they're in a box, but it's a box made out of bone and it's really hard to eat. And another thing with box turtles too, people have kept them as pets. So once you remove them from where they're at, they actually become, they can get sick, they become stressed out. And if you ever see them trying to cross the road, you move them toward the direction they're going because once you move them, if you try to put them back where they're coming from, they'll constantly try to go back to that same spot. So you're just putting them at risk once again. Now I'm gonna move on to the painted, Midland Painted Turtle. So this is a turtle you'll find in the pond. So basically you'll see these sunning themselves on the logs um, and you'll see them out of the water too. Mostly they're in the ponds, but a lot of times the only time you'll see them up on land is if they're going to lay eggs. So you can see, I can't get them to come out. Um, you can see the yellows and reds in the, in the turtle. They also live to be about 50 years old. So, and if you look at a shell, the pond turtles tend to have that more compressed because they have to be able to glide through the water essentially versus a box turtle who had that nice domed round shell. She doesn't have to do much swimming, so she doesn't need to be hydrodynamic or aerodynamic because she's not that fast. But the Midland Painted Turtle is one of the most common turtles you're gonna see in Ohio. They're the ones that are often on logs. And when you can get a good view of them in the sun, they really do look like someone painted them. They're a beautiful turtle. Yeah, moving on to Lauren. Yep. All righty. So, Speaking of other turtles, I do actually have one right behind me. He's been 
trying to make a little bit of a cameo. There's our soft shell turtle as well. This is the um, spiny soft shell. Now the so spiny soft shell, the males tend to be smaller. So this one is a male and he has spots. The males retain their juvenile spots. So they're really neat to be able to, you can easily identify them if they're about as big as he is. And you can see a turtle like that that has a spot. She can be like, oh, that's a male. And that's a fun fact that you can look and spread that knowledge. It's a really neat one to be able to identify. So the non-native turtles in the pet trade. So the red-eared slider, there's debate whether or not they, they are native or not. The, uh, these turtles are going to be more common the farther south you go, but there's, they don't know whether they're a remnant population when it was warmer here, but the, the thought really is that they are most likely, the populations that we do have here are because of the pet trade. So people get them as pets, they think they're cute, they realize they are a lot of work, they're smelly, they grow a lot bigger than they think they can, they can't, you can't just keep them in a small tank and that tank needs the water change all the time. So what they do is they go release them and they're like in a pond and they think they're doing the right thing, but it actually it can be a really big impact to our native turtle species. So here's some more information about the red-eared slider, when, where you can find them. However, because of the pet trade, we can actually find them pretty much throughout the state. And again, just remember releasing pets is wild and will endanger our native wildlife. Uh, I'm going um, to break in for a minute. This is Jenna. Um, um, fun fact about the red-eared slider. They can actually be found in Borneo because the pet trade has spread them so far and so wide. Um, back in the, the 60s and 70s, they were really popular as pets. They're one of the first turtles that were uh, commercially bred. And um, for those of you, Borneo is in Indonesia. It is an island. And so to have a population there is 100% due to uh, humans and people letting their pets go. So red-eared sliders, North American species, but all the way on the other side of the world on an island. So back to Lauren, just wanted to throw that in. So, Lauren, you're, you're muted. Uh-oh. Oh, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Okay. I didn't want to cooperate for a hot second. So again, so the red-eared sliders being a non-native species, uh, native to North America, like Jenna said, it can they can really affect the populations of our native species. So if you, the best thing is never release a pet. So our there we go. Native turtles. So the turtles that we're going to find here that are definitely supposed to be here. They come in all shapes and sizes and colors. Um, this is one of my favorite, the Eastern Musk Turtle. They're also known as stink pots, and that's because they are smelly. They earn their name very well, and it's a really great defense mechanism. If you smell really bad, you probably taste really bad, and if you taste really bad, nobody wants to eat you. Um, they are a much smaller turtle. They're going to be more of like this size turtle. Um, so they're small enough that they would have potentially a, a lot of predators just because they don't get as big and it's a lot easier to eat things that are smaller. But they are strongly aquatic, so you're going to find them most almost exclusively in the water. Um, but they, being small, they make up for that by being smelly. And they are very, very cute turtles if you get a chance to see them. Uh, it's best to watch them for a distance. Don't try to pick them up because it, you will smell really bad if you try to pick them up, if not get bit. The spotted turtle. This one is one of my favorites. This looks like almost somebody decided to color this turtle from a, a coloring book. Um, they are going to be more kind of like in the wet prairies. They like it really, really wet. So up here in Northwest Ohio, where the Great Black Swamp used to be, this was the perfect habitat for them, but they are not very common at all at this point. A lot of their habitat has been lost or altered in such a way that it is um, not conducive for them to live there anymore. So this is, if this is a, if you're in an area where you can potentially see this turtle, it is quite a sight to see. But they are, again, threatened by loss of habitat. The Blanding's turtle. This one is here up in our backyard at this park, at uh, Mommy Bay State Park in the Northwest Ohio, where the Great Black Swamp used to be. These guys are adorable. Um, they kind of have, even though they are aquatic, they have a more dome shell like the box turtle. 
um, because you can find them more and they like more of the marsh. So they can do well in the water, but at the same time, they can tolerate the land really well. But what's really cool about these guys is they have this bright yellow neck and bright yellow underbelly, and it makes them look like they are smiling. So just because of where the yellow hits, they always look like they're smiling. Um, and like the box turtle, they have that hinge plastron, on, so they can close. Um, the, they can't close it as tight as the box turtle, so it's not as like boxy, but at the same time, they can close it versus other turtles, which don't even have that hinge. So this is a turtle that you can find in the north, more likely the northwest, but you can find it in northern Ohio. And then our map turtle here, this one is very limited. It's going to be more in southern, but like all shapes and sizes, this almost looks like a dinosaur with its the vertebral, the vertebral scoot, scoots on the top, that nice like spiky look to it. And then we have our Midland soft, smooth, smooth soft shell. So remember, we have our spiny soft shell and our smooth soft shell. The spiny soft shell, like the one behind me, he has its little teeny tiny spines. It makes him feel almost like sandpaper versus this Midland spoon, smooth soft shell. That's a tongue twister for you. Um, that's going to be soft. Um, they're going to feel like just a deflated rubber ball. Uh, and so as I mentioned before, when we we're talking about turtle anatomy, turtles shells can be made of bone or cartilage. The soft shell turtles are going to have that cartilage shell versus the bony shell. But the trade off of having that cartilage shell, which is not as much protection as the bone, is they are going to be a lot faster. These guys are lightning fast in the water. They are super hard to catch just because they are so fast because they're not weighed down by that bony shell. And a lot of times you're going to find them, they're going to bury themselves under the gravel and the substrate of the river or lake or wherever they are to add for camouflage and add since they don't have that protection. So they have really good camouflage and they're very, very fast. So again, like Kara showed you, our eastern box turtle, they are they are a wonderful turtle, um, especially if you can find them in the wild, make sure to leave them in the wild, take nothing but pictures. Um, they, are, they are a very neat sight to see. They are slow moving, but at the same time, they have this wonderful, wonderful shell that is very ornate and acts as really good camouflage and fallen leaves. So you're, again, as I mentioned, you're gonna find them in the woods. And so they use that by having that camouflage shell to basically blend in with that leaf litter. And these ones are one of the big ones for pet trades because they don't get very big. They're, they're easier to have in captivity than some of our other turtles. It's pet, the pet trade is a big threat. So you're not allowed to collect any turtles in the wild unless they're regulated under hunt, the, our hunting and fishing. Box turtles are not. So again, our Midland painted turtle, this picture shows you kind of how the brighter colors that they can have that our camera didn't quite show you. As you can see, they are found pretty much throughout the, the state. Um, they have the, that bright, bright red. They literally look so, like someone took a paintbrush and just made streaks on this turtle. Uh, even though that they are any wild animal that you encounter is going to try to defend itself. Um, they These guys, if you pick them up, they may try to bite, but they are can become very tame. Again, these turtles are wild animals. They are not pets. So if you find it in the wild, leave it in the wild. They do a lot better in the wild than they'll ever do in captivity. And here's our snapping turtle. So I mentioned our snapping turtle. They have the different plastron than the other turtles do. So the snapping turtle doesn't have this developed plastron that some turtles like the Midland painted turtle, which this shell came from, does. They have a lot. Um, it looks like almost like cutouts. And so it allows them to be very maneuverable, but they, when they pull themselves into their shell, they can't close up their shell like the box turtle or the blandings turtle. They don't have this extra shield to protect their belly. So what they do in lieu of that is they have a very strong bite. And so they can protect themselves with their mouths. So that's just definitely something to remember if you encounter a snapping turtle that they will try to protect themselves, um, especially where often they encounter them crossing the road. You never want to grab a snapping turtle by the tail uh, if, if, you, if it's not safe to do so. You never want to try to get them from the front because they have, like our soft shell turtle has an incredibly long neck. They can get you almost any part. The best thing we usually do is we push them across with the broom or we try to get them into a bucket if can. Now, I know not everybody carries brooms and buckets in their vehicles like we may. But it's just something to remember if you're trying to move, move them across the road, just take extra caution with the snapping turtle because they have a very serious bite. And then here's another close up 
of their mouth, but they are very important. They are not aggressive in the sense that they are not going to actively try to pursue you. They're just going to try to defend themselves. So here's another close up of their beak like mouth and their heads are very large and they have a very strong mouth. Now, snapping turtles are really great ambush predators in the sense they have this long neck so they can kind of hunker down and wait for a fish or potential prey to swim by and extend their neck and grab it. And they will eat a variety of things. Oftentimes, we only see the snapping turtles out of water during breeding season. They have to lay their eggs out of the floodplain. So they have to lay their eggs essentially somewhere where it won't flood and their eggs won't drown. So they have to sometimes go fairly far from bodies of water that we would think that they're too far from, but they have to make sure to lay their eggs in the place that the eggs would actually be able to hatch. So here's another close-up of our eastern spiny soft shell. They are adorable turtles, but like Erin said, they may be physically soft, but their personalities are not because they do not have that protective armor. They have a very, very strong bite as well. And with the addition of being fast, they'll protect themselves with their mouths. But the very unique thing about the spiny soft shell is they can kind of absorb water through um, their mouth. So they can, they almost do, it's almost like breathing, they can absorb oxygen through the water through their mouth. And it looks like they're kind of breathing underwater. And if the water's really cold, it carries a lot more oxygen. And that allows them to get enough oxygen to survive under the water for the time being. And usually you'll see that during the winter time and fall as things start to get cooler. So our map turtle, again, um, this turtle can have a very ornate shell. As you, if you look at the scoots on it, you can kind of see it almost looks like a road map. They tend to be more spiky than the midland painted turtle, which they often get mistaken for, and they don't have as much red. But they are also very, very beautiful turtles. So challenges of turtles in Ohio. Um, you would think having this big bony shell that it basically is they're wearing a shield at all times, they're protected from a lot of stuff. But regardless of that shell, they also they have a lot of challenges that they have to overcome. So big ones, here's some examples. So crossing the roads are big ones. The human habitat, the roadways intersecting their habitat uh, is a big issue, especially during breeding season where they're having to go far to lay their eggs. Oftentimes you're finding you'll see turtles dead on the side of the road from vehicle collisions. On the picture on the top left, this is showing habitat fragmentation. So the loss of habitat or usable habitat for them um, is a big issue as well. Some turtles have a very limited geographic range and where their geographic range is split up in multiple zones that they can actually live in, that can affect whether or not they can breed. Uh, pollution also is a really big one. Um, it affects many, many animals, turtles included. The turtle in the center is actually a uh, red-eared slider that got caught on a plastic, uh, basically soda uh, connector. And uh, that, sh because remember their shell grows with them, it got caught and it was there for a long time because plastic does not degrade and break down fast. And this turtle has a deformed shell because of it. So that's just things to consider that even though turtles may have this shell, they live a long time, they also face a lot of challenges to get to an old age. Um, and it all begins at the very beginning, nest predators. A lot of animals will eat turtle eggs and will eat a uh, different uh, ground nesting animal eggs as well. So skunks, foxes, raccoons, those are all, raccoons in particular are a big one that tend to like to raid turtle nests. Um, and they basically can wipe out 100 eggs in one night. And that they might not just hit one nest, they might hit multiple nests. So especially turtles that are a concern in terms of population or very limited geographic range, these nest predators on top of having lots of habitat and having uh, roadway cross crossings to deal with can really affect the populations. But you can help turtles. You can actually build nest protectors because remember turtles don't have any parental care once they've laid their eggs and you it, it actually is quite a process for them to lay their eggs. It takes a little bit of time. Um, the best thing to do is to leave it alone. But if you know there are potential predators in the area or it's, it, there might be issues that it might get raided by something, you can build the nest protector. And on the left hand side, it shows you everything step by step what you need to do. And remember, the babies are small, so you just have to live, leave essentially a little bit of a gap for them to be able to get out, and they will. They, they don't, don't need parental care, but you're, actually, you're giving them a step up to be able to at least hatch, which some turtles don't get the ability to do. Again, I mentioned the challenges to overcome. Even insects can be 
a potential predator for turtles. So on the top left is actually a newly hatched turtle. Um, it looks like it's probably a map turtle or a muff turtle that hatched. And that is a giant water bug feeding on a turtle. Uh, birds are potential predators. So the great blue heron is eating a soft shell turtle. Um, and then you'll even see dogs and coyotes. Basically, if something thinks it's going to eat it, it's going to try to eat it. So the smaller the turtle is, the more predators it tends to have, but that shell doesn't necessarily give it a 100% chance of protecting itself from something that's going to try to eat it. But another thing, so turtles, some turtles are regulated under our fishing uh, regulations. So in particular, the snapping turtle and soft shell turtle are turtles that can be collected and hunted with a fishing license. So this is just some information on how big the turtle has to be to collect. And all of these are done based on allowing if they're old enough to breed, if they've gotten a chance to breed, because you don't want to collect all the young ones because then you won't have a breeding population. So this is all regulated to, to allow the population to continue and still be able to reproduce. So again, you have to make sure you have a, a fishing license. If you are going to collect turtles, you are not allowed to collect any turtles that are not regulated under this, and you may not collect any turtle eggs. And you can find more information about that this on the Division of Wildlife website as well. So I mentioned the pet trade. Box turtles in particular are affected by the pet trade because of their size, because of their temperament, and because of their ease of care in terms of they'll eat a lot of different foods. Um, turtles do best in the wild. They're made to be out in the wild. They should remain out in the wild. Um, this is an example of a raid on an illegal pet, uh, illegal, illegal pet trade. These were all turtles harvested in the wild. This is actually in Florida, not in Ohio, but this does happen in Ohio. Uh, these turtles were all collected. They should, should be in the wild. They should have remained in the wild, but this was found in a warehouse, essentially. This is for the illegal pet trade. So that's just something to consider that when you are, especially if you want an exotic pet, Make sure you know where your pet came from. Make sure you're allowed to have that. And if you want something exotic, it is always best to get captive bred rather than wild caught. And then we're opening up for questions. Okay, okay awesome. awesome. Um, so we have um, so quite we have a few questions, questions that came in. in. Um, um, so I'm just going to start from what we got, we got first. first. Um, um, and Lauren, I'm going to, I'm hearing an echo, so I'm going to mute you while I'm talking with, to answer the questions. Um, okay, so Elizabeth had wrote in and uh, said she found a painted turtle in my backyard, in her backyard, with brown, sig big ivory segments on the bottom of its shell. Why are the segments different colors? Um, Jenna did answer this in the Q&A, but for people that are going to be watching back on YouTube, I just wanted to cover some of these questions. So um, I don't know who wants to take that one. Uh, if you're talking, Lauren, you're uh, muted. So turtles can have a variety. So just like just like people, we have a variety of hair colors, we have a variety of air colors, hair uh, hair colors, we have a variety of skin colors. So turtles can actually have a variety of morphs and coloration. So the turtle might be partially leucistic. So unlike albinism, where they're completely lacking the melanin production, leucistic just not, just lacks it in certain parts of the body or not 100% completely. So that turtle may have had just some um, a mutation that just didn't necessarily have the full coloration that other turtles might have. Um, we, especially here at Mommy Bay, we actually have a population of garter snakes that are completely melanistic, meaning they're all black. So finding variations of reptiles, uh, colorations in the wild is common, um, it, depending on the different species. But uh, it's, in the red-eared sliders, they, uh, there's um, a group that lack a xy xanthomorphic, I believe. It starts with an X, and essentially it lacks the, the red production. So instead of the red ear, you'll get the yellow ear of the slider. So turtles can have uh, coloration mutations just like other animals as well. So that's my guess is probably what it was. Okay. Um, and Danielle asked, what is the oldest kind of turtle? Um, Jenna, do you want to take this one? Um, yes. Um, and, and actually, I want to add on a little bit to what Lauren just said. So um, <laughs> I happen to have a painted turtle um, here in my living room. 
Um, to be completely clear, um, I have this turtle in my house as an Ohio Department of Natural Resources naturalist, um, and I have permits for this animal. Um, usually, uh, she lives at Mohican State Park, and you can see her there in their nature center when they're open, but because of COVID, we had to do things a little differently with our animals, and that's why she's living with me right now. And she's being, I mean, isn't she being a great model right now, right? <laughs> She's a little bit of a show off. She's very, very used to people. Um, so the other thing about the coloring on, on here and how they're different is I said, you can see her bottom. Um, the reason that a lot of animals, you actually see this kind of coloration in a lot of aquatic animals in that she's lighter on the bottom and then she's darker on the top. And this is so when she's swimming, anything that's looking up at her will be looking into the sun and this light part here will help her blend in. So predators can't see her as easily. Same thing from above. When you're looking into the water and you're looking down, it's darker. So this helps her blend in. But something that can sometimes change how the turtles look is, see this little bit I've got here? This is part of one of her scoots. Scoots are the segments that you see on turtles. If I put her up here really close, you can see that she's got lines, right? You can see her shells kind of divided. Each of those is called a scoot. And um, to some extent, it's almost kind of like rings on a tree. Um, the turtles will get growth rings. It will roughly correspond to how old they are, but it's not exact. So you can kind of count the rings, the growth rings that you see. And I don't think we're going to be able to see them. No, can't really see them on the camera, but you can see them in person. But um, the turtles also shed these scoots. OK, we're all familiar with a snake and how a snake sheds its skin. Turtles do that, but not the same way. They will shed skin from the part of them that is soft from their legs. Sometimes when you see a turtle, you will see pieces of skin hanging off. But also as they grow, they shed their scoots. And so little pieces of their shell come off. And I don't think I'm going to be able to, well, maybe I can. I can kind of show. See how this fits on her? So as she grew, this came off. And as these are getting ready to separate, they can make the turtle look a different color. This one, you see, it's kind of yellow. It's been in the tank, so it's kind of colored from the water. But when they are lifting off of the turtle shell, it will make them look a lot duller um, than what they are after. It's kind of like a snake. If you've ever seen a snake shed, right, right before it's really dull and kind of grayed out, it sheds, and then holy cow, it's beautiful and bright. Same thing with a turtle. So if you saw this turtle before she shed, she would look a lot darker and a lot duller um, than what she is after. So seeing a turtle with ivory spots on her may correspond to whether or not she has shed those particular scoots yet. So anyhow, um, since I have such a willing model here, I just thought I would you know, step in for a minute and talk about that. So I'm going to put her uh, back in her tank. So thanks. OK, um, and so while Jenna is coming back, I'll just um, kind of go back to. Oh, are you there, Jenna? I see I you am. kind of. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I need to go wash my hands. Uh, okay. And I need to go wash my hands because aquatic turtles. I, Lauren, did you talk about salmonella yet? You did. Okay. This is a good time. There. Um, we did talk a little bit about uh, pets and turtles as pets. And I think that's something we can probably talk a little more about because it's not a really great idea for a lot of reasons, um, not just for the turtles, but if you have an aquatic turtle, um, aquatic turtles are a fantastic source of salmonella bacteria, which is not a fantastic thing at all. Um, salmonella can make you very, very ill. It causes intestinal cramps, severe diarrhea, bleeding, and can lead to hospitalization, especially in young children. So it is super important right now that after I handled her, I need to go scrub my hands um, to make sure that I don't accidentally make myself or my family sick. So on that note, uh, what are you holding up there, Erin? Erin <laughs> is holding up a bottle of hand sanitizer. <laughs> 
which I just don't happen to have handy right now. So I am going to step aside and go wash my hands. OK, and I'm just going to um, make sure we, we get back to Danielle's question. Um, she asked, what is the oldest kind of turtle? And so I just wanted to, Jenna had answered in the Q&A, so you, if you want to check it out her answer, it's there. But she said that turtles as a group have a fossil record dating back at least 220 million years ago, which is super cool. Um, and the fossil turtles are very I, almost identical to the current species. So I just wanted to make sure we got Danielle's question and I'm going to move on to let's see we had another question are are turtles endangered um lauren cara or aaron do any of you want to take that one so some turtles are here in ohio especially in the northwest ohio we have species of concern so our box turtle and landing turtle are threatened species just based on the geographic range here in ohio so yes turtles can absolutely be endangered and actually absolutely be threatened at threatened population so depending on where you are, especially like worldwide, uh, the tortoises, which w live very long and ha take a while to get to the breeding uh, age, they, they they can absolutely be, they we actually absolutely have endangered species of turtle and tor tortoises worldwide. And here in Ohio, the box turtle and the blanding turtle are big one species of concern here. And the box turtle is especially threatened by the pet trade. Okay. And um, Amelia, age seven, had wrote in and asked, uh, where do tortoises live? So is there a difference between turtles and tortoises? Can you touch on that, Lauren or, or Kara? Absolutely. So tortoises and turtles are basically, tortoises are land turtles, essentially. And so what we think of as tortoises are going to be more in the drier areas. Uh, down south, like Florida has the gopher tortoise. Um, so there are definitely tortoises in the United States. Here in Ohio, what, what we, most people may consider tortoises aren't really going to be found. The closest, the closest the land turtle is we're going to find is the box turtle that's going to look as close to tortoises of what people think they are. Okay, um, and then we had Dean write in and ask, can a frog get as big as a turtle? Um, and I just wanted to give a, a just plug in our upcoming series on frogs, toads, and um, amphibians, uh, or salamanders, sorry, it was frogs, toads, and salamanders that we have coming up on the 23rd. So that'll be Wednesday at 10 a.m. Um, we might be able to answer more questions about frogs then. And um, let's see, what other question? Uh, Christy asked, what should we do with a turtle that is crossing a busy road? We put them on the other side where they are crawling. Is that best? Yes, that is actually correct. As I mentioned earlier, so if you do see a turtle trying to cross the road, move it to the direction that it's trying to go. Because if you take it back, or yeah, if you take it back again, it's just going to inevitably try to cross the road again, and then it's probably going to get hit by a car. So it has a strong sense of direction? Yes. Okay. Got it. Um, to answer about the frog, can a frog get as big as a turtle? It all depends on the turtle you're talking about. Um, a musk turtle, about the size of my fist, a frog can absolutely get that size. Our bullfrogs can get up to two pounds. A snapping turtle, no. A baby snapping turtle, yes, but they're not going to get, we don't have any 55 pound frogs at this point anymore. At the size of a musk turtle, absolutely a frog can get the size of a turtle and bullfrogs have even been known to eat small hatchling turtles. So that's just something to consider. Okay, um, is it illegal to collect turtle eggs from the wild if they were disrupted by people? Um, so turtle eggs are illegal to collect. The best thing to do is to contact a wildlife officer um, when in doubt, uh, if you know that this, this it might be an issue, they will give you further instructions of what to do. Um, contacting the Division of Wildlife would be the best bet, uh, or contacting a wildlife rehabber, and they would be able to give you directions as well. But turtle eggs are illegal to collect. Um, the, if you can, building a nest protector is a really good option because then you're not collecting or disrupting the turtle eggs, you're keeping them from further disrupting. Okay. 
Um, and if anybody has any other questions, feel free to type them in the Q&A now um, before we, we wrap up in just a short bit. But we have, let's see, somebody asked, when is the best time of year to view a turtle nest? So up here in Northwest Ohio, spring lasts, isn't the same spring as Southern Ohio, winter tends to last a little bit longer, but usually between, depending on where you are in Ohio, where you're in the United States, the months of May all the way through the end of July, turtles are usually breeding, breeding with June being the peak of breeding season. Most places you go. Okay. Um, and then Dean asked, how long is um, a turtle hatchling? So I guess how, how many days before the hatchlings break out of their eggs? It is really species dependent, so I'd have to get back to you on an exact answer, but usually um, it's going to be close to around birds. Jenna, do you have a guesstimate? A, a, good, a good average for a turtle is about 40, 45 days, give or take. They can be as early as 30 days. Um, and again, uh, like Lauren was just talking about things being different between Northern Ohio and Southern Ohio, um, you can expand that to the United States as well. Um, turtles will just date faster in the Southern states just because it's warmer. Um, but a good average on that would be about like 45 to 55 days and um, some as quickly as 30 days. Um, other species, I believe it's the leopard tortoise, um, takes up to uh, four months to hatch and their eggs can actually um, go into a, a pause um, to where they will start developing. If the conditions become unfavorable, they will simply stop for a little bit, put themselves on pause. When conditions become favorable again, they continue developing and hatch. So kind of a cool little adaptation there. Okay, and we have one last question. Well, a few questions had come out in about um, turtles that live in different states. So um, are they all throughout the US? Um, some people have asked about New York. We just had Natalie, age 10, asking about California. Um, do you want to touch on that, Jenna? Sure, let me unmute myself real quick. Um, yeah, any of, if you're interested in different states, um, I don't, you know, there may be people here who live in different states. Um, check your Department of Natural Resources. Um, I know that our wildlife department um, has an absolutely fantastic guide on reptiles of Ohio that has all the different turtle species in it. Um, in Lauren and Kara's presentation, they actually showed some of those pictures from that guide. Um, and I shared the link in the Q&A. Uh, yes, absolutely, please do. Um, I know someone asked about turtles in New York and a really quick search, I found um, the New York uh, Department of Natural Resources and they have a fantastic graphic on their turtles, so check with your DNR, um, especially your Division of Wildlife or whatever the equivalent is, because um, I'm pretty positive that almost all the states will have some really good resources for you on this. Um, one other question that we had that I uh, wanted to hit on really quick is somebody asked um, where they could go uh, to pet a turtle. Um, while unfortunately, like a lot of things, um, because of COVID right now, our state park nature centers are closed, but um, when we open again, and we will, <laughs> um, you're, there are 31 state park nature centers um, in your 75 Ohio state parks, and um, most of those have uh, education animals, at least at some point during the year. Um, some of our uh, permanent centers, like Mommy Bay, um, is uh, usually, not in COVID times, but usually is open year round. Um, Caesar Creek also has a very nice nature center that is usually open. So if you want to see a turtle and perhaps attend a program and get a chance to, because somebody said, how, where can I pet a turtle? Um, so if you want a chance to pet a turtle, uh, you can visit your state park nature centers and see your naturalists and they can uh, do a program. So good place to go. Awesome. Um, and one last thing. So I uh, was wondering if, I don't know, Lauren or Kara or Aaron, Jenna, whoever, uh, if you could talk about how a turtle's shell, you know, absorbs things, um, because I just, 
I don't know if you saw a recent article about a, a class that had painted a turtle. And so why is that not OK to do? So basically, it's like someone going up and painting part of you there. Not only does it allow them, especially if you're releasing it back into the wild, allows them to be easier, more easily seen by predators. They can potentially absorb some of the toxins uh, through through their shell itself, which so if you're using paint that is not supposed to be that is not safe for skin, they're going to feel the feel the effects of that. So it's like going up and painting yourself with household paint, not body paint and having to wear it at all times. So even though it is made out of the made out of bone made out and has that keratin layer doesn't mean that they can't absorb it. OK. Thank you. Thanks, Lauren and Kara and Aaron, um, Jenna. Thanks, everybody that asked questions today. Um, I just want to let you know or give you a quick reminder. Um, once again, next week we're talking about Ohio snakes, so we hope to see you then. Um, we are also doing a series on uh, with our division of forestry, so if you're interested in forestry at all, next week um, on Tuesday at 10, we will be doing tree ID. So I hope you can join us for that too. But um, we're going to wrap it up here and everybody have a great week. Thanks.